I'm I ready. have one of first in our office. Cool. Hey, 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 Jeff, how come you have a uh, YouTube live, right? Mm -hmm. You doing? We are. We're going to do, we're going to try YouTube live for this so we can prep for our virtual block party. So I'm actually going to make. I'm excited for that. The That's good. Is that pretty good? Yeah. And now it's popping up on my screen. YouTube live. Yeah. What, what day, oh, what day is the block party, Jeff? I can hear myself. Hear Question, you, uh, what day is the block party? Saturday. Saturday? Mm -hmm. This Saturday? Next week, Saturday. You'll see the oh, email. Okay. Right, yeah. Joe. I don't got the, the email. Oh, you saw the email, Joe. You saw the email about um, what Elena and uh, Frank are doing, right? Yeah. There you go. That's basically it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like Zoom adding meeting or something. Oh, wow. Hi, Sam. Hey, Thomas. Is that a doctor right there? Thomas, why did Sam get the first hello? <laughs> well, I know, right? I was going to ask that too because usually wait, wait, wait. It's, it's the opposite. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Actually, Thomas, we were just talking about house. how tomorrow, how tomorrow's your person. Here, Thomas. Huh? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I hi have, Jeff. What hey Thomas, how are you? Hi Thomas. Hi. All right. Hey Ben, are you there? Yes, oh. I'm here. Hi Sam. Hey. Oh. Ben Varga, not you. <laughs> yes, I'm here, Jeff. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go Hello, everyone. to the host. Hi, David. And you can uh, actually, you're the co host. Hi, Sam. You co host hey. today. Yeah. You can get things. Oh, I see okay. I went there. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> Hi, David. Hey, head coach hey, David. For the Jeff, they can meal anybody. That's your day. That's your day, David. Excellent. So How are yours? Yeah. Hi. All right. Hey, Ben. All right, you're unmuted now. Perfect. Okay, cool. So everybody else is on mute for now. Um, and then you can get all set with Dr. Kalkstein. We will unmute him, but you, you can, you're going to run this. I have it set up on Facebook Live, or I'm sorry, on YouTube Live, because we're mm -hmm. trying that for a virtual block party. So that's all set up and you're, you're running the show, okay? Perfect. I'll give it a couple more minutes. Got a couple. Yeah, perfect. In. Can you hear me? Hey, Dr. Cox, you know if I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Hello. How is everyone today? Doing pretty well. How about yourself? I'm doing well, thank you. Doing well too. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Hey, are we starting yet? Not just yet, Danielle. We're going to start in about three minutes.
All right, I have got seven o'clock um, on my computer. So thank you guys so much for joining tonight. Um, this is Special Olympic Maryland's um, first ever health forum, um, virtually as well. Um, so a big thank you to the health forum leader, um, Dr. Warren Kalkstein from Kalkstein Chiropractic. Thank you so much for helping out. Of course, thanks for having me. Yep, and um, without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to you and we'll go ahead and get started. Awesome. So, uh, hey everybody, uh, I know that it's, it's tough for everyone to kind of get feedback and, and questions and Ben, you let me know if, if I'm mistaken, but um, if you're looking to chime in or if you've got some questions, um, I guess uh, message them on, on the board um, and I'll try to get to as many of those things as possible, as many as I can. Um, and I'll kind of get started first in the beginning here, just introducing myself, just so you guys have an idea of who I am. And, um, and maybe you've seen a couple of the videos that we've been sharing on the on the Facebook page. If not, go check those out. Um, there's some great information that can really empower you to help you out in, in your sport and just getting healthier overall through through healthy movement and exercise. Um, so uh, so introduction, and then I'm going to kind of go into uh, my approach with health. Uh, hi, hi. Um, uh, I'm going to go into my approach with health when it comes to, to working with athletes that come in with complaints and how chiropractic care and some of the, the conservative or um, uh, conservative being more of a drug free approach using physical therapy and what's called manual therapy, therapy with your hands uh, can help out athletes and, and get them back to their sport quicker and, and, and faster. So I'll, I'll go into that and then I'll just kind of field questions about health, uh, questions about uh, things that you you might want to ask me about my, my profession or what it's like coming to see me or even just generally speaking different questions you have about what would be called musculoskeletal health. And that's really where I kind of um, I hold my uh, my ground in, in that that realm. So physical therapy, fitness, uh, body health and in a conservative manner. So um a lot just just to touch off what I'm going to be talking about going forward and I hope I hope you guys enjoy it I'm, and, and really I just like to say how thankful and grateful I am that Ben int introduced me and, and invited me to, to, to share um, anything I can help out with okay um, so to begin uh, my name's Warren I am a chiropractor and I work in Towson Maryland uh, I, I grew up here in Towson I played lacrosse my whole life uh, played lacrosse at Towson University, uh, and uh, I, I played Division One lacrosse there. I was a midfielder. I loved I loved the sport, and I really enjoyed my time playing. Right, um, my father and my brother, while I was playing, were both practicing chiropractors. So I got to be introduced to how uh, chiropractic care helped me as an athlete as I was going through um, the rigorous schedule that it, that it is uh, being a lacrosse player. So. And I was physical too. I was really physical. I like to throw my body around when it came to being uh, active in my sport. So it, it helped having um, my father and my brother as support mechanisms for me. And so I, I went, I traveled a little bit after I graduated from Towson. And then I came back and I went through um, my, my postgraduate school at, at, in chiropractic school where I got my doctorate and my master's. And uh, I'm going to put a link here if you guys are interested about uh, just seeing um, – my, my, my father and my brother, and then my good friend who just joined our practice, Dr. Dalton, that's, that's just kind of a little bit of a, a bio, um, if you will. If you're more inter interested in like, hey, what did he do when he graduated school? Or what is, what is some of Dr. Warren's passions? There, there's some of those on there. It kind of talks about my, uh, my love for outdoor activities. Uh, you guys can see my bike in the background. I, I just started mountain biking. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still very, very active as much as I can be that, uh, that my, uh, my free time allows me to be so um yeah family run business for sure sam i love it uh working with my father and my brother is quite interesting uh some days and some days it's just exceptional and awesome and i'm just grateful for both of those days it's it's a great environment uh, my father is a great leader he's been the chiropractor for the baltimore orioles for the last almost 20 years so a really long time and um uh, does anyone here know who um any of the famous Colt players, right? Uh, so there's a there's a quarterback that played for the Colts. His name's Johnny Unitas. Um, my dad started out working with some of those players that played on those professional football teams, uh, and Johnny Unitas was a big advocate for chiropractors. And then um, he's been he's been working with the 
uh, Johnny Yu. That's right, Sam. Uh, just like Johnny Yu, where, where the, the football uh, field is named out at Towson. Um, and so uh, he's been he's been working with those guys for the last 20 years. And I got to I've had to have my chance of working with those athletes as well and working alongside athletic trainers to help support uh, the baseball players from time to time. So, um, yeah, I bet it was pretty cool to meet him, Elena. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed working with the family and, and I and I graduated. I got to work at a hospital for six months and get involved with all types of approaches when it comes to pain. And now I work as a chiropractor, right? And uh, specifically, we, we treat a lot of injuries for athletes in a conservative manner. There's things that we do um, from dry needling, which is a form of therapy that, that uses, think of an acupuncture needle, if any of you guys are familiar with acupuncture. It's more of a, a, a Western approach or approach where it deals with injuries using those needles. We do a lot of physical therapy or strength training. And then we do a lot of manual work like we talked about so um, athletes can come in with a, a lot of different issues and I want to try to kind of keep it uh, so if, if, and I think this can everybody can kind of touch on like I've got aches, I got pains, I got problems here, I got issues here. I want to try to, to just approach the general concept of an injury as a whole. So um, there's different things that we do when it comes to problems. So uh, you might see someone coming with a shoulder pain, low back pain, hip pain, any of those areas, right? And when we treat a problem, there's different aspects of health that we have to deal with. So when you when it comes to recovery from an injury, or when does it come come with a recovery from a problem like a, a sports injury? There's there's different aspects of health you can focus on. Sleep is one really important thing. So when you sleep you recover immensely from a hard workout or a hard sports day. Um, getting adequate sleep and getting to sleep at a really good time can be helpful for your recovery. Um, nutrition is another key component for, for recovery for an injury. So your body has to, it gets broken down when it gets hurt, when it gets injured. There's a, there's a, there's a mechanism where there's, there's tissue that needs to heal, right? So eating well during that time has, is supportive towards that process of healing. It helps with, that inflammation process. Let me jump to that question real quick. Thank you for your question. Does getting adjusted help with mental health? So that's more of the manual stuff. When, she, when Christine asked, does getting adjusted, adjustments are where we uh, manipulate or adjust the spine. You might hear people getting cracked or popped at a chiropractic office. That's where we try to create more balance within the spine to help with movement and help decrease pain. Okay, in a nutshell, that's what a getting adjusted does. So. Um, your mental health is very closely related to your physical health. So when you're stressed, when you're tense, when you're irritable, when everything is hurting, it doesn't help with your psyche or with your mental health as much, right? And so maintaining health in general is good for your mental health. And, and if, if, uh, if there's a problem in your back, if there's problem in your spine or your joints and you get relief from an adjustment, in, in essence, it can help with that, that mental health, they're improving your overall mental health. So um, I think it, that's a great question. And I think that you just make sure that you think that there's not one thing that solves tension or stress. You got to look at that kind of that, that pie that I was just kind of getting into. It's all those aspects of health that are very supportive. So your physical health has a direct correlation with your mental health. And if, uh, if, you, if you maintain a routine amount of, of, of work on your body, a chiropractor, it can really help balance you in that way. Okay. Um, when the Orioles have away games, do you travel with them as well? Good question. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we just treat them every other home game. So we'll go in about an hour and a half to two hours before the, the, the Orioles take the field. Those guys are getting ready. They're getting loosened up and they're, they're working out or they're doing their pregame ritual. And then they'll stop by with us. And if there's anything that we've been focusing on, like treating a problem, we'll treat them. But most of the times, they're just looking for what's called like a tune-up, if you will. So they want to get tuned up. They want to get loose and limbered up before they go out there and play. And that's my favorite uh, type of person coming in because they're just living a healthy lifestyle and they're just maintaining that health. Um, so it's really cool. I get to – I love that that, that – uh, there, I'm a part of their pregame ritual, if you will, of getting worked on. Um, so thank you for that question. And, and welcome if anyone has, has joined recently. Again, there's a link at the top if you guys are looking for kind of an introduction or a, a little bit of a, a blurb about who I am. Uh, you, can, you can see that I posted that a little higher if you joined us a little later. Okay. 
Um, so again, uh, coming back to what we were talking about when it comes to maintaining really good health and, main, and recovering from an injury, we talked about nutrition, we talked about sleep, and being in the right state for that athletic endeavor comes to physical fitness. And that's, it's important that whatever sport you guys are playing, um, whatever, whatever athletic endeavor you guys like to get involved with, uh, it's not just that sport that you should be practicing. It should be, you should be supporting your body through different physical exercise and physical activities so that when you go to engage in that sport, your body's able to handle it. Right. And you're more, uh, uh, apt to deal with the different types of variables that come with a really intense sport, right? So you don't know what's coming around the corner. You don't know what's happening next in that sport. So being dynamic and mobile and strong is, is so helpful for injury prevention, right? It's, it's common sense, but we, we tend not to practice it so much. Uh, we don't, we don't tend to do what's called prehab or exercise before a sport. So that's something that I think that uh, is really helpful when it comes to prepping. All right. So um, overall, you kind of get, get where my picture is coming from for maintaining really good health, you know, sleeping well, eating whole food, uh, nutritionist diet, and then uh, your movement should be, you should have quality movement. Okay. Um, now, when it comes to your actual sport, we just did, we just released a video on YouTube. If you guys are interested, there's a, there's a foam roll uh, warm up video that we just posted. Um, you know, we talk about uh, stretching and, and getting loose and limber before an exercise. And I really think that's helpful. And I think also building up a little bit of a sweat and getting a little bit of good quality movement to your joints and your whole body is really helpful too. So if you guys are looking for some ways to really feel a little bit fresher starting out with your sport, check out that YouTube video. Okay. Now uh, the last component when it comes to chiropractic care with an athlete coming in is that I want to look at their whole body where they're moving, right? So we're, we're pretty fortunate and we're pretty blessed in my opinion to be, to have such a complex system that is all your spines and your muscles and your joints that help you get from point A to point B or throw a ball 50 yards in the air. Right. And so, uh, for, for that mechanism to work well, there needs to be balance within the system. And sometimes kind of what we're all doing right now, where we're sit or we're on screens or where we're kind of hanging out all day and we're not moving that, that body that we have, um, it can lead to some problems, right? It can lead to some, some stiffness. It can lead to some aches and it can lead to some poor patterning or muscle imbalances. So making sure that there's balance within your system is, is really important. And a chiropractor can do a great job of helping uh, maintain that or improve that if, you, if there is a, what we call a deficit, okay? So having a chiropractor on your team is, is helpful in maintaining that balance and, and, and making sure that you're speaking to some a chiropractor that knows your sport and knows your athletic, uh, your, your, your sport through and through so that they can help support you be the best athlete you can, right? Um, drinking a lot of water is so important. And I think that's a good, good one. And uh, we did a YouTube video and that's going to be coming up in the series about the important for importance of, of hydration. Okay. And I can kind of digress and talk about that for a quick second. Um, if you guys are okay with that, and if you guys have any questions about nutrition, sleep, any good quality foods, you should eat exercise routines that are helpful for gaining strength. Uh, or if there's any problems you guys have want to want to throw at me, um, I'm, I'm going to be fielding questions. So, Please, please put them up there. Um, I have questions. What you help the team with? I'm a big Orioles fan. So cool. Good question. What, what, what kind of problems come in uh, as, as an Oriole or an athlete coming to see us? Pitchers tend to come in a lot. So um, you guys have seen those guys throw over 100 miles an hour, and they're not only doing that once or twice, but they do that all day long, and they do it a lot of days a week. So with that type of repetitive overhead motion, where they're putting their whole body into a pitch, comes some problems. So you guys might hear about pitchers getting like Tommy John surgery or shoulder surgery or, excuse me, elbow surgery. That's a common thing that they just kind of beat themselves up over the years that they play. And so I see them a lot and, and maintaining good mobility in their upper back and adjusting their upper back, uh, their ribs, adjusting their ribs and adjusting their neck to make sure that there's not tension so that they can be balanced and, and explode and, and pitch with the velocity that they need to pitch. So thank you for that question. Um, I'm a big Orioles fan too. I really enjoy, I enjoy that sport and I really, I really just like working with all types of different athletes. So um, drinking a lot of water is another good comment from Amanda Moore. Thank you, Amanda, for your comment. I appreciate that. So 
hydration is something that you might get, you might hear a lot uh, on the sidelines or from maybe from a parent or maybe just kind of you've heard it your whole life drinking lots of water and I think that's a good thing to do and it's consistency even prior to the day of the event so maybe two three days in, in a row where you're you're really focusing on your hydration if you've got a sport coming up so you go in with balance but there's also more than just the water aspect of it so uh, there's something that's called electrolytes that help maintain good balance between cells and the fluid outside the cells so um, and and those electrolytes naturally come from uh, fruits and vegetables and some of the foods that you eat. So as long as you're maintaining that whole food diet and that you're not uh, you're not overloading your plates with processed foods, most of the time you get the good electrolyte balance from your plate. Uh, so drinking a lot of water with good whole food diet brings people to a good place when it comes to their athletic endeavor, their sport. You don't really need to worry about so many uh, sports drinks or uh, drinks that are loaded down with dyes or a lot of sugars, right? They taste really good. And especially when you're super thirsty, they're like the best thing ever. But uh, I would argue that um, an orange and some water at halftime is probably maybe a little bit better. And um, um, you should you should look into that if you've got questions about electrolytes or things along those natures. Um, thanks, Ben, for sharing the link um, for those uh, those YouTube videos on the, uh, the virtual movement page. So Elena, you asked, I always stretch my back before swimming because it really helps my stroke and get a better streamline in my flip turns. Right on. That's so cool. I'm glad that you focus on spinal mobility. And um, a lot of the videos that we put up there, there's a lot that, that show different ways of not necessarily stretching, but getting mobility to the spinal joints. Um, it's kind of hard to visualize why it's so important, but for arm movement specifically, your spinal movement, especially in your upper back and your neck is so important. So if you can get into a routine of not just stretching your shoulders, like a man is doing a good job of over there doing, but also of maybe incorporating some stretches for your neck where you're stretching your neck or you're bringing your chin back and you're extending your neck like so. And, and I, and I show those in a little bit more detail and, and, and explain those a little bit. Oh, that's a good one. Amanda. big circles with the neck that feels good. Um, that's important before your, your sport. And so uh, with even with the pitchers that I was talking about before, their neck and their upper back motion is important for their speed of their ball. If it's not, if they're stiff there, they'll lose a lot of speed. So thanks for, for that question or that comment. I, I really appreciate that, Elena. <clears throat> Jennifer, whenever I walk or run, my knees and legs hurt and are sore. What do I do? Hi, Jennifer. Uh, thanks for your question and your comment. I appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of things that can cause some of that soreness and that, that problem, but an immediate thing to do for soreness in joints and muscles is to rest, ice, elevate your legs, okay? And um, if you're not a fan of ice, um, there's also what you can do is called a, like an Epsom salt bath. So that's where you're taking a bath or maybe some lavender salts that help soothe muscles, so a warm bath at the end of the day. Um, if you are noticing that your knees and your legs hurt after you walk or run, uh, maybe working with a coach or, or, or even a, a, um, someone that knows how to lift to strengthen your hips can be really important. So our knees are kind of like uh, the cousin that gets beat up by the ankles and the knee and the hips if they're not functioning well. So I see that a lot of times. The knees aren't that complex. All they got to do is this. They flex and extend. The hip is really complex and it has a lot of stability components to it. And so I, I tell you that just so you can kind of get a picture of why I say the hips are important. Um, so strengthening your hips, doing squats, doing lunges can really help support you if you want to go run. So if you guys remember, I kind of talked about that in the past. Don't just do your athlete sport. Do things that help support your sports. Squats and lunges and core exercises can help you be a better runner, a better walker, um, and not have that discomfort as often. Oh, thanks for the question again. I appreciate it. Uh, Thomas, what can be done for an elbow with arthritis? Okay, so we'll, well, maybe I should ask this, what, arthritis, what is that? Arthritis is, can come in variable, um, it can come from a lot of different sources. In the past, it's been known as this thing, it's coming from what would be called wear and tear. Arthritis is the joints are just getting a lot of use, right? And that's a big component of arthritis. But um, remember how in the beginning I talked about recovery from an injury? 
your joints need to recover in the same kind of way of the daily stresses that we put them through. So good sleep, good hydration, good food, wholesome foods can help recover from stress of the joint, literally, right? So yes, there's arthritis in the elbow. Uh, it got there from from over stress, uh, uh, poor movement, over overuse. So now what do you do if you do have what's called arthritis or that, that wear and tear of that joint? And which is kind of a scary name, but there's a lot that can be done for arthritis, right? Uh, and quality movement, stretching, mobility work, a good warm up before a routine is really helpful for that joint. That's how that joint stays healthy is through quality movement. Um, there's no there's no blood supply to a joint. It's all through good movement. So uh, the way that the joint gets its nutrition is through compression and movement of it of its own uh, source. So um, good healthy stretching, good mobility work heat before an athletic endeavor or your sport can loosen up that joint a little bit if it is arthritic and then um, icing down afterwards if it comes to my office what do i do with an arthritic joint i adjust it and move it that's something i do with all day long with people and it really helps them a lot um, the cavitation or the pop can really help with uh, joint mobility and then dry needling or soft tissue work and then uh, a PT for the elbow. So that's what I would do for an arthritic joint. And then what you can do on your own is you can warm it up beforehand, stretch it, move it, uh, load it a little bit and then go have fun and do your thing. That's really healthy for that joint. And ice it down if it's sore afterwards, get good sleep and hydration. All right. I hope that answered your question about the elbow. <clears throat> I always drink water and have some fruit. Elena, that's awesome. You should keep doing that. That's a good ritual to get into when you're when you're doing your thing and the right amount of fruit, right? Um, so fruits in a salad is good. I honestly think that's true. Thank you, uh, Daniela. Um, De Daniela brings up a good point. I I literally try to have a salad a day, like with a good protein, a healthy homemade uh, a vinaigrette, and I've got a cheat code. And, and my fiance, she does an amazing job of of making good wholesome foods for me. Uh, when I don't have time to do it. But if you can make it a, a ritual or a habit to, to have a salad a day with some good healthy protein, I highly recommend it. It's a good source of, uh, of subs substance and it's a good way to get your veggies in, um, especially when you start to get good at making them and they can be delicious. All right, cool. Thank you for that, Danielle. That's a great, uh, great comment. Let's see. David, David said, I do, some, so I do the same exercise before going in the pool. Right on. Yeah, good little bit of a warm-up. You guys ever remember watching Michael Phelps loosen up before he, he would uh, jump in the pool, if you guys ever watched him in the Olympics? It's pretty cool to see how mobile he is. Um, and he's a big advocate for that type of approach to his health. He's really he's really flexible. He's super strong. He's, he works hard not only in the pool but outside, and he, and he sees people that help him stay healthy as well. Um, so good, good, good uh, practice to do there, David. Uh, Mary, I have a friend that got injured for the Special Olympics and basketball game. I was out, I was, I was able to help out for him. But that's awesome that you did that, Mary. Uh, Danielle, when I go to bed now, I'm sore. What do I do uh, when I'm when I'm sleeping? Okay, so sleeping habits is, I think, what Danielle is is asking about. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I sleep on my side. I have a pillow that keeps my head in a neutral position, so it's not pushed this way. It's not yanked this way, but it's right in between my shoulders. Um, that's one of the best ways if your hips or your low back is tight at the end of the day and you're trying to get comfortable sleeping, sometimes putting a pillow between your knees or draping a pillow, draping your leg over a pillow can be helpful. And then, um, you know, you gotta find the right mattress for you. That's one thing. And then you can also do some simple nighttime stretches before you get in bed. Um, I go over that in one of my YouTube videos on the movement page, it's called Low Back Pain, but there's a routine that you can do for low back pain. And a lot of them are based off some simple bringing your knees to your chest and flexing your knees back and forth, forth to stretch your hips out. Um, so I hope that can be helpful for you. There's a lot of things that you can do to help your discomfort when you lay down at the end of the day. And just a simple stretch routine and being mindful about your body when you go to bed or even when you wake up um, is really healthy. It's a good thing to do instead of maybe uh, jumping on the phone for a little while before you go to sleep, maybe grabbing into a little stretch routine and being mindful about that is is something that you can do to just kind of do that little extra effort to, to take care of that discomfort. Okay. Um, I do 10 squats in the morning when I first get up another 10 before I go to bed. Lana, nice. That's awesome. Uh, squats are a great way to, to, to move. And, and I like that you're doing that before you, you go to bed as well. 
Um, what are some release if people have, uh, uh, I'm not sure what that is to be honest with you, Dupatrin. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that one, Elena. So your joints crack all the time, um, all the time my shoulder, this is coming from faith, my feet on my elbow and it hurts. So I'm sorry that it hurts. Um, and a lot of people ask me about popping and clicking from joints, right? And usually what I tell them, if it's bothering you, if it's something that you need to, uh, you have to avoid because it hurts to do and there's pain, then, then getting it uh, addressed with either a chiropractor or, or a physical therapist to help you move better is an important idea to, to consider, um, as well as just to see if maybe your joints are cracking a lot because the muscles around the joints are tight. So going through a little bit of a stretch routine instead of just popping and cracking a joint right off the bat can be helpful. So um, think bigger picture, not just the joint, look at the muscles around there and see if some simple stretches help loosen up that joint and help with some of that discomfort. I try to stay balanced and not fall. What do I do if I work out exercise so it won't hurt the muscle? So Melissa, you bring up a good question about uh, things that you can do to help with balance. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, if you go to a gym, which you can't unfortunately do right now, but in the gym, there's a lot of machines, right? And machines make it easy and simple for you guys to work out. And it's a good way to get a little pump in uh, if you like to lift weights. And that's good. I really think that's good. But I would say that if you can get with a coach that teaches you how to lift free weights in a, in a safe environment, right? Especially if you're not used to doing that, uh, that'll challenge your joints a little bit more to work on stability while you're standing up or you're in different variable positions. So um, I would say if you're working on your balance, try to get away from the machines and try to practice uh, exercises on your feet a little bit more and try to practice lunges and squats um, and uh, make sure you have the right footwear when you're doing that too, okay? Uh, Danielle, you're, you're, you said your grandma does that already. She, she knows that trick. Grandma's had the best uh, advice in my opinion. So not a bad, not a bad comment there. Thank you for that. Thomas, do you think I can continue powerlifting with an arthritic elbow? Yes. I think that it's a big, it's a, definitely a possibility. Lifting is really health, healthy for the joints, loading the joints. So maybe uh, you might have to modify your weight a little bit of the amount of weights that you're pulling or lifting. But if you do have arthritis in an elbow, is lifting a bad thing for it? Well, if you exceed its uh, its ability to, to handle that stressor, which is the weight, then yes, it's too much, right? But if you have a, a, the comfortable weight for you, you have a good warm up routine, and maybe you can even look into some stability um, uh, sleeves for the elbow. Those are really helpful for for uh, for elbow discomfort. Um, that would be something I would consider if 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 you're looking for uh, to keep doing what you love, which it sounds like is powerlifting. Okay, thanks for the, the, the clarification, Elena. Let me go back to your, your question you originally asked. So there's a lot of things that come in, right? So I, I was working with someone at the end of the day today that had psoriatic arthritis. And psoriatic, ar psoriatic arthritis is a, is a systemic condition that affects the joints. We talked about osteoarthritis, that wear and tear type of an arthritis, but there's also other types of things that affect joint discomfort. And your immune system can honestly affect uh, and that's the case in rheumatoid arthritis or RA. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of symptoms that come with that joint swelling and pain, uh, tingling, nerve tingling, sensations, and uh, simple soft tissue work, dry needling, and uh, different modalities that treat the tissues to keep them healthy can help out with some of the symptoms of some of those more systemic conditions, like uh, what you were what you were asking about is with Dupatrin. Um, so I hope that answers your question. I haven't come across a case of that yet, as you can kind of see my, my ignorance towards it, but um, I've seen people get a lot of relief with conservative care with a very uh, a vast amount of conditions or problems. And the nice thing about it, it going to someone that practices in a conservative manner is the risks are low, right? So there's no medicine involved, there's no surgery involved. It's it's a healthy approach and, and wherever that problem's coming from, uh, usually we work around those type of issues and, and really just are trying to support the body and its natural well-being or health. So, and a lot of times that can help with a lot of symptoms from a lot of problems. <clears throat> okay, let me go ahead and, uh, Ben, how are we doing so far? Looking pretty good. Uh, okay. You've missed the question yet, which is awesome. 
All right, I'll keep them rolling. Um, so, Mary, you said I get hurt sometimes. I do. Uh, is defense sport? Does that mean you're doing like a self defense class, Mary? Can you clarify for me? I want to move on to Daniela's question so I can get back to it. She told me it works for her. She's going there next week, checking her back. I'm awesome. Uh, I love that it's working for her. Um, I think that's you're referring to your grandma. We see a lot of grandmas and grandpas coming into the chiropractic office. They love uh, they love getting adjusted and, and it helps them with just staying active and healthy, right? Uh, we talked about what's the healthiest thing for an arthritic joint, which naturally happens as we get older is there's some arthritis that can set in. And that's just a part of living a good life. In most cases, there's things that you can do to help support your body so it doesn't become a problem. But And one of those things is getting adjusted. So I'm glad your grandma's getting some relief uh, with, with whoever she's going to see. Ben, thanks for uh, clarifying that. Uh, I, okay. Now I recognize that name and, um, uh, thank you. So there's a lot of constriction of that tissue with that type of a problem and, uh, you know, soft tissue work can really help out with that. Uh, mobility work to the tissue, the fascia, the fascia is the, the tissue that analyzes everything, right? It's not just the skin on the top. It's, uh, imagine your body is like one giant, best way to describe it is, is like you're like a, there's a cobweb of fascia that controls and connects every tissue in your body, right? So fascia goes from the surface all the way to the bottom surface of your skin. It connects through your bones. It goes in and has influence on your cells. It's everywhere, right? So fascia, when it gets tight, it affects a lot of systems, right? So those people will complain a lot of coldness, numbness in their hands. And so getting mobility work done to that tissue is super helpful for that type of problem. Um, and so uh, we, we see that a lot. Like there's something called trigger finger where a finger goes like this and it's hard for that finger to open up. It keeps wanting to do this. And then there's a contracture and the tissue gets tight. And so I'll actually do what's called active soft tissue work. Um, if you look up, if you're looking for someone that does really good soft tissue work, look for someone that practices a therapy called active release technique, ART. Um, they have a website that you can always find practitioners wherever you are. Um, and we, that's something that I utilize a lot when it comes to managing soft tissue injuries. Uh, but that's a, that's a nice way to, to treat uh, that type of problem. Um, and you can, a lot of physical therapists, a lot of chiropractors and some massage therapists use that technique. So great question. Thank you for that. Um, so heart pains, Ooh, that's a good question. And that's, that's really a, a complex one. So are you referring to pain in your chest? Are you referring to literally pain coming from your heart? Go ahead and clarify that one for me, Amanda. And I'll talk a little bit about maybe cardiovascular health and conservative ways of handling it. But chest pain that's coming from the heart, that's something that you want to get followed up with by uh, in, in more of an emergency setting. So when you have that type of complaint, that's, that's serious stuff, right? Oh, cramps. You got anyone to get cramps at night or when they're laying down and then boom, they get hit with a cramp in their leg. That's not a great feeling at all, um, to say the least. And what can you do about it, right? And we talked about hydration. That could definitely play a role in it. And I see cramps come into play in two problems. One, where people aren't consistent with their hydration, where they go through these bouts where they drink a lot of energy drinks or they drink a ton of coffee all day long, and then maybe there's a couple of days they get their water in. So inconsistency with hydration is one area where cramping comes into play. And then another thing that can happen with the cramp is that tissue, that fascia can, can be tight around a muscle. You get what's called a trigger point in a muscle. You can get tension in that muscle fiber and that muscle doesn't loosen. It stays tight. So then when you try to go in and relax, it doesn't want to let go and tightens up and you get those shooting pains. That's another thing that I see a cramp type of pain, which is not fun at all. I hope that you're not getting those, Melissa. <clears throat> Uh, Mary, you, you came back to me for the Special Olympics like basketball. Um, let me try to scroll up to see your – this is where I get hurt sometimes. Oh, ah, so playing defense in basketball is tough. It's, it's hard on the hips. you got to get low. you got to be athletic, and you got to make sure that you're in a good position so that you can be explosive and stay up with your person that is, is making the move, right? They're making the, the go to the basket. So how do you do that? Core strength and hip stability. You're, if you're dominant in those two areas, if you have a strong core and if you have strong hips and you can, you can practice, you know, doing some lateral work, some lateral work with like ladders, um, that can make a huge difference if you're trying to become a better defense player in basketball. So work on that stuff if, uh, if you're 
if you're looking for a way to get uh, better and not hurt yourself playing defensive basketball, Mary. Elena, you came back and said only affects uh, people of Scandinavian descent. I think, uh, well, thank you for that. I didn't, I didn't know that. That's great uh, information to know. So Jeff commented, and some of us are trying to work at home, but hopefully we'll be able to get back on the field court soon when sports start again. How would you recommend that we start getting our bodies ready to get back into sports shape again? Jeff, thanks for your comment. I appreciate it. Um, a schedule, okay? Um, you might not think of that as the first thing that comes to mind when getting healthy, but it's going to hold you consistent. And so I see people that are successful in life um, in general, right, when it, whether it comes to being healthy or maintaining good work-life balance and a lot of things like that, they, they have a good organized schedule, okay? So scheduling out your breaks from work to make sure you're getting up and doing a routine of stretches and exercises and then scheduling out your workouts through the week. So sit down on Sunday or sit down tonight and put the days out in front of you. Put down what you're going to do each day and a good balance of strength training and mobility work, cardiovascular work where you're running or you're doing your cardio. Uh, and, and, and I think that we're doing a good job of, uh, or excuse me, Ben and those guys are doing a great job of posting different workouts that you can do. So there's lots of ideas out there, right? But what holds us back? Uh, consistency in a schedule most of the time I see that being the case right because we feel good when we work out if we feel great afterwards it's just more about making it happen so uh, schedule it out for yourselves and if you guys find yourself working at home your phone is a good advocate or a good sor source of support for uh, reminding you to get up and move right we can be on Facebook and it's like wait two hours just went by what just happened right and so if you have a little alarm or if you've got a little bit of a routine that you're really getting focused in on your work and you need a break, that alarm goes off. It's like, what's that? Oh, it's time to get up and do my stretches. It's time to get up and move. And so I recommend getting up and moving every hour, every 30 minutes to help out keeping your spine healthy and moving well is a good idea. Okay. And so, um, what, how long we've we been talking? I, I'm, I'm, I gotta, I could be a man of my word. I'm going to, I'm going to stand up and stretch here in a minute after I get to some of these questions. Maybe we'll take a little break of, and stretch if you guys are comfortable doing that. Uh, if that maybe uh, if that helps that routine and you can watch what maybe I do to help stretch out. So let me get through a couple of these questions and we'll do that. Um, Elena, you said you have trigger pains in my back and my knee. Luckily for me, they go away quickly. So um, trigger points uh, potentially can be what you're referring to. And those could be tension points or knots. Excuse me, in a muscle. Those are very uncomfortable and soft tissue work using a foam roller or a lacrosse ball and rolling tissue out and relaxing it in a gentle way is an easy way to help out with some of that, that trigger point pain. Um, I put it, I set a schedule and put it on my refrigerator mind. David, that's, that's a great idea. A visual reminder is a, is a great and helpful tool. If you guys want to know a cool little trick, uh, get yourself a, a calendar, a paper calendar, and whatever habit you guys want to build, um, try putting an X down on the days that you have completed that habit. So say if you wanted to get to bed earlier every night and you get to bed at eight o'clock, uh, you just have a bad habit of kind of just getting up, staying up all night and you're, you're, not, you're restless the next day. Or say if it's exercise, you want to exercise every day for three months, right? You want to find some form of exercise where you're moving every day. At the end of the day, go to that calendar, put a red X through it. You're going to look back on those months that you're successful and you're going to see just a line of X's, right? And so that's a really healthy way to get a visual reward for keeping up a habit. Um, so if you guys are interested in a way of practicing that, that's a, that's a nice way of being consistent with that schedule or that calendar on your refrigerator so you can walk by and be like, yeah, look at me. I'm, I'm killing it this month. I'm doing so well. Um, it's nice. It's good. Um, uh, reward yourself in a healthy way when you see that type of, uh, of, of lifestyle or habit. And then it feels that much better when, when you, when you do that. Right. Um, cool. So Mary said, what do you work on with the Baltimore Orioles to keep on getting on them healthy? So one thing that the Orioles got in the last couple of years is they got a complete update, like a complete revamp of their kitchen and they got a chef and They've got a lot of Dominican players, so they have a, another chef that came on board that cooks them a Latin American food, but it's all healthy, whole food diet. 
there's nothing processed. It's all cooked fresh for them daily. So uh, that's one thing that they do, right? And what do I personally do with them? I, I keep them moving. I keep them uh, healthy. I adjust them. I, I work their whole spine. I make sure they're balanced from their feet down, their feet up to their shoulders, to their hands. So uh, that's my approach with them. That's my job in their, in their system, um, if you will. But for in terms of what, what they get from a healthy standpoint, they're, they're getting it from every aspect. So if there's someone you want to look up to and say like, how do I become the healthiest person that I can be so I can just keep being a rock star like I am? You look at an Orioles player, they get healthy nutrition, they have sleep advice, they do yoga, they do strength training, uh, they, they have a good community, um, there's mindfulness and meditation involved with their training, and uh, they make sure that they're, uh, they're, they're having fun doing their thing. Ben, is there a common issue that you see a lot in the athletes you treat, neck, pant, back pain, that they, you can do something differently in everyday life to improve on, like eating healthier, stretching more? Thanks, Ben. Um, who? Yes. Okay. So with athletes specifically, uh, I actually see um, the problems I see the most with them is they go into a gym and they kind of jump right to uh, 10 out of 10 intensity, right? They don't have a schedule where they work themselves up and they build up strength. Okay. And we see a lot of commercials. We see a lot of good marketing where people are like, in six weeks, I got fit and healthy and I lost 75 pounds and yada, 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 yada. To be honest with you, there's it takes time for that tissue to change. And, and I think that a, a healthy way to do it is with a good regimen or a schedule. So get with a coach, get with someone that knows how to schedule out a workout regimen. And that can be really helpful in terms of building up a healthy lifestyle and avoiding injury from overtraining or overdoing it in a gym or in your sport. So that's what I see the most. And that takes, it's, it's interesting. It takes patience. It takes, uh, it takes uh, focus, attention to detail to avoid that from happening. And it takes a, an investment in yourself. So if you want to invest in yourself, if you want to take the time to really uh, detail out what you're going to do to make you yourself healthier, then the results come right? It's not just like just jumping right into it. You got to be thoughtful about how you take care of your body and you plan out your, your workout routines. Elena, I walk my dog every day, twice a day, and I average over a mile and a half each time. Dogs makes a wonderful workout. You kidding me? Cam, up, 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 up. Oh, there's my butt. Oh, he's stretching. <laughs> you say hi? Who's that? Who's that? There's my workout, buddy. What's the dog's name? The dog, his name is Cam. You gonna say hi? Oh, come on. Hey, man. bud. Hey. Oh, 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 give me a hug. Hey, get up here, bud. I wanna say hi to you, man. There he is. Okay. Oh my golly, he's big. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh wow. Hi, Jim and Shabu. Hi, Cam. What's that? Look at that. That's a German Shepherd. That's a German Shepherd. Oh my gosh. All right, I'll show you how big Cam is. Hold on one second. So, something that you can do to break up your day when you're at home and you're working is you can do squats with your dog. But don't, don't do it unless you practice with your German Shepherd. So, here's Cam. <laughs> I think you have to be strong to be able to do that. Oh my, of thing. Gosh. Here's Cam. Oh my here's gosh. Are you kidding me? I can only oh, He's a big boy. Oh my gosh. Wow. So dogs are great workout. Jeez, you're strong, man. Wow. Uh, oh, next oh, he's so cute. He looks he looks bigger than he is. He's got a lot of fur. Oh my gosh. You gotta well, watch out for the sharp nails of his, you know. Yeah, he's got some nails for sure. He's got some bear claws, is what he's got. Oh man. <laughs> so Cam is my workout buddy in the morning uh, before because it's, it's hot out. So he likes his morning routine. And so we'll go over into the park in the morning and we'll just kind of run around. We'll train a little bit and he'll help me out with some sprints. And he's a pretty vicious defender when it comes to soccer. So I got to, um, I got to keep my foot skills up to date or, or he steals the ball and puts a hole in the ball. From me, so it's fun <laughs> working out with him. He's so cute. Yeah, he's a good dog. <laughs> I have, I have a big dog. 
What's that? What's that? I have a green thing too. He, he That's like up to your shoulder. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, that's that's some of the things that you know we can touch on when it comes to the routine is getting up and squatting with your workout buddy, your dog, and and I guess if you want to really kind of get to it, it's it's great to have a workout partner. So if you're interested and you guys are are trying to get into a healthier lifestyle, accountability is one of the most healthy ways that I found for me personally um, of being consistent with with my workout routine because. Even coming from a background with sports, even coming from a family of chiropractors, even coming from uh, just having all the tools to be able to do it, I still find myself not being as consistent with my routine um, uh, often. And the, one of the things that brings me back to it the most, besides playing in my activity or wanting to be uh, have fun and, and, and compete, is um, as a is a workout friend. So. Um, definitely try to pair up with somebody or a couple people and then talk to them about a schedule and get on a routine with them. And then you're going to look four months down the road and you're going to look back and be like, man, look where we came from. Look how much stronger we are. Look how much healthier we are. That's a great way to, to be consistent. And, and when it comes to that, if you're trying to start a new routine, if you're starting to get really strong, want to get strong or you want to be active, Think that long. Think that you have to be consistent for four months. Think you have to be consistent for six months for there to be a drastic change. It's not going to come in a month. So it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of consistency um, and, and working on some of those uh, those areas that help support your health. And it really can make a big difference. So, um, Mary, I'm sorry that you're having that discomfort in your back. Maybe she could check out what Ben sent you for, for the back pain. So, um, we're getting closer towards the, the edge and the end of our, of our, of our talk. Maybe we got about, Ben, how, how long are we going for tonight? I, I know you men, mentioned anywhere from 50 minutes to an hour. Is that right? Yep. You got it. So I think, um, if you have a couple more points, if you have any that you wanted to, to discuss, and then otherwise we can open the floor for any, any extra questions and then we'll wrap things up. All right, let's do, well, I think I've kind of talked a lot from, from, in terms of what I can help with, what problems I see, um, my approach to health and how important physical fitness, nutrition, sleep, those kind of things are. I keep coming back to them and I hope that you guys get those. And, and Joe, feel free to, to, you can ask me if it's easier. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking here in a second, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, or you can type it. So uh, yeah, so I'll take questions now to finish this up and, and to try to help anybody out. And if I don't know the answers, I'll try to direct you to the right place. Mm -hmm. Joe, how can I help you? Yeah, um, I have a frozen shoulder. Um, I can I cannot like uh, can I wait sometime? Because yeah. I'm trying to how what kind of exercise do I do? Frozen shoulder is a tough one, and um, it's it's a it's a tough diagnosis to get. And if no one knows what frozen shoulder is, it's when uh, the the cartilage or the tissue around the shoulder gets really really tight, right? And um, uh, how it happens and, and how to treat it are, are kind of a, a thing that gets argued about, or maybe there's not a lot of clarity in the, in the literature. So it's a tough thing to do, right? Um, and and a lot of those things that I talked about uh, approaching health in, in, in the right way is important because it is, it is really a condition that needs support in all aspects of life. So decreasing um, processed sugar, right? Making sure that you're eating that whole food diet, that's important, good hydration. Now, from a mobility standpoint, what, look up something called a wall curl, okay? Now, usually with frozen shoulder, you lose the ability to go to the side, right? Uh, you can, it's harder to go to the side. So that's pretty good range of motion. Um, you can do wall crawls. That's something that you can practice. It's called a wall crawl. That's a stretch more so. A wall crawl is a little bit more active, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if you look up the YouTube video, Ben, if you want to post it, it's for shoulder pain. There's two exercises I show. One is wall crawl. It's a good warm up. It kind of is like uh, in between active range of motion and passive where someone's moving it for you. You use your hand to crawl up the wall and it can be a good stretch to the shoulder. And the other one that's good range of motion, Joe, uh, yeah. is what's called banded pull aparts or using a, a TheraBand to strengthen your shoulders up. Um, so look at the exercises on the shoulder pain video, Joe. They'll help you out a lot. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. Okay, so what should we eat but not 
junk food to stay healthy? Melissa asked that question. I would, I would start with cooking your food. Okay. So uh, if you can focus on creating a habit of cooking your food or being a part of cooking your, your, your meals, that's a good start. All right. So that'll start to make you a little bit more curious about what you're eating and what you're consuming as opposed to just taking something and warming it up. Okay. So that's a start. The second thing I would recommend is think whole foods when, when it comes to that cooking and then uh, maybe a salad a day where you're having a good, healthy chicken, a good, uh, a good protein like chicken or steak. Uh, you can even get your proteins from vegetables. Avocado is a really healthy thing to put in that salad. Balsamic vinaigrettes are a really nice, easy, simple dressing to make. And then you can load it up with whatever vegetable you feel comfortable eating. So that would be a, an idea of a really healthy salad or a food. How about um, a coconut? Coconuts? I love um, coconut. I, I love coconut. I love coconuts too. I like um, coconut juice base. I like coconut oil. What's what about what? Coconut juice base. Oh coconut yeah. Coconut water. Juice. Coconut water is great. That's a great way to stay hydrated. A lot of natural yeah. electrolytes mm -hmm. in coconut water. I think yeah. coconut oil is a really healthy fat to cook with or to um, I I actually put it in my coffee to be honest with you. I use do something called a like keto coffee. Um, mm. If you're interested in that, you can look up keto coffee. I like um, coconut cream pie. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had a hematosis in my right leg muscle. So what do I do? That's a good question. In hematomas or hematosis, so those are considered just a, a change in the blood formation in different areas. Uh, it depends on, on the problem, but most of the time, um, those, those issues resolve themselves or they're what's called benign. Um, and there, there's nothing that you need to do. It's, it's just there and it's, it's there, right? I had someone come in that had what's called a hematoma or, um, a change in the blood vessels. It's a benign change. And that's, it's what it just says it's just there, right? Um, so first off, make sure that you're working with the healthcare provider that accurately diagnosed it and, and you can ask them questions when you go in. Uh, but from a mobility standpoint in my, in my, in my history with that type of problem, it's been uh, just to stay active and healthy like normal. Thank you. You're welcome. Alyssa had a really question pain. in the uh, chat. Yeah. What's that? I was just going to, Alyssa had a really great question in the chat um, about using heating pads for pain. Ooh, good question. Um, so what can you use to help alleviate pain in a natural way at home? Ice packs eating pads, some types of ointments like an icy hot can be helpful or a menthol rub. I love those. I think they're really helpful. Uh, but in terms of your preference, um, heat does a great job of bringing good blood flow to an area and can help out with the sensation of pain and relieving it. So uh, we use what's called moist heat in the office, which is great. Uh, we also use something called class four laser, but sometimes people just have these, uh, these ice packs that that function also as a heating pad if you mic them up. Um, I recommend wrapping that heating element, if it's not electric, obviously, in a, in a moist cloth so that there's the element of moist heat to it um, and making sure it's the right temperature. You don't burn yourself, right? You're messing around with heat. Um, I, I just got to say that. But uh, heat's a great way of dealing with pain and discomfort. And then follow it up with some healthy movement or some stretches. That's the best, too. Like when you combine the two of those two things, um, that's the great, great, great combination. Cause at first you're like, oh, I'm stiff and I'm hurting. I don't want to stretch. Everything hurts. You put a little heat on it. It feels better. And then you stretch and you're like, now I'm feeling golden. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go run with the dog. Cool. Thanks for that question, Alyssa. Um, I eat so much chicken and turkey. My mom jokes. I should go feathers and cluck. Her <laughs> 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 mom's funny. Um, healthy smoothies, Amanda. Cool. I like that. I had a smoothie today uh, during lunchtime and it was full of really good, good things like uh, spinach. And I had these chocolate, uh, I had cacao powder. Cacao powder is delicious and it's super healthy for you. It's full of antioxidants and you can get a lot of it and you can put a big heaping tablespoon and your, your shake will taste chocolatey, but there's no sugar in it. Right. So it's a good thing to add to your shake. Um, healthy protein that you can get. I like almond butter. I think it's a, one of those nut butters that is, uh, is not hard on the system as in your body. Um, I think it tastes good and maybe a little drizzle of honey. 
So I got I, my, my go-to shake is cacao powder, spinach, ice, blueberries, maybe some strawberries if I got them. And then What's I throw cacao a little. cacao powder? What? What's cacao powder? It's like uh, what makes chocolate, but it's the original, original thing that makes chocolate. So in order to make chocolate, you need like sugar, cream, and cacao. Uh, this is just the cacao part. Maybe you oh, oh. Is that right? Have anyone any chocolate experts out there? I like chocolate. <laughs> I like chocolate I like, too. I like chocolate Me too. too. Oh, I, like I love it. I make chocolate popcorn. I melt a little chocolate, uh, a dark cacao chocolate from from Trader Joe's. Good stuff. Ooh. A little coconut oil on there, and then I drizzle that over some fresh popcorn and let it, let it settle. Oh, I, I love it. Great, great healthy snack. Chocolate popcorn. I have a question. Of chocolate. Dogs, do not eat dog chocolate. Do dogs eat chocolate? Yeah. Dog chocolatey. Oh, doggy. It's so good. It's, chocolate. It's good for you. Dark chocolate. Oh, oh, dark chocolate. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the good dark stuff. Dark chocolate is really good. It's so good. It's good for you. It's good for, it's good for your health. Um, I think uh, I think a healthy amount of the good dark chocolate is a that. nice little treat from time to time. There's no doubt about it. Also, I can make oatmeal smoothies mm -hmm. taste very good, too. Right on. Yeah, you can put oats in your smoothies. You can get you can whip those bad boys in there, and they could be a nice form of some healthy whole food carbs. Um, I wouldn't overdo it on the on the on the oats in your smoothie. I think that having a smoothie is a great way to kind of get a lot of your vegetables and fruits in for the day. And if you're not one that likes to sit down and eat a big salad, so even if you're just starting out and you're not used to eating a lot of fruits and veggies, uh, you can make a tasty smoothie with your fruits and veggies and make it happen and get your get your numbers in for the day and still have your, your, your chocolate fix at the same time. So um, that's a nice way of staying healthy. And, and, and it's a good way of, if you're feeling like you need a snack between uh, like a lunch and a dinner and you need that little bit of last little pick me up at the end of the day, it's a nice way to kind of keep your day going in the right way. All right. Well, with all this food talk, I think that's a good, a good time to say thank you to Dr. Warren uh, for being so generous. Thank you, Dr. Warren. Thank and his information. So let's all say thank you to Dr. Warren. Thank, thank you. you, Dr. Warren. Thank you, Dr. Warren. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Right. I appreciate the support and the questions, and I hope I was able to help you guys out just a little bit. And uh, I look forward to just you know just kind of being a part of your guys' group and and helping out where I can. Yeah. Definitely. So you know, thank Dr. Warren has been time. very generous with posting some videos on the Virtual Movement Facebook page, and they are also up on the Virtual Movement website that we have now that I will type into the chat um, right now. It is virtualsomd.com. Um, so that's also a place where you can go everything archived with all of Dr. Warren's videos, the, the move meeting that he led for us a few weeks ago. Um, so we hope everybody's doing well, everybody staying safe. Um, and quick plug for our next one, if you had a good time with this, uh, health forum i almost called it a move meeting health forum <laughs> our next one ben correct me if i'm wrong is june 24th yep june, cool. 24th. june 24th um it's wednesday at seven o'clock um where mm -hmm. we have um a, another group connected to towson university like dr warren's an alum nice. um uh, towson university audiology is going to come talk about healthy hearing nice i know i see nice. that has his Sam has his headphones on, and I'm sure a lot of us are sitting with earbuds in uh, a lot these days, like I am. So this will be good to learn about. Um, oh, Mary has her earbuds in now, too. So uh, I don't have a oh, great way to learn uh, to keep our um, hearing safe. Yeah, cool. So we'll definitely tune into that. Uh, make sure you join us next. Uh, Friday, Friday. Why next, Friday meeting oh yeah too. friday we have a move meeting and then oh, next yeah. week mm. uh, is our virtual block party uh an opening ceremony so uh, oh, yeah. you know, next week that. should have been I'm summer days at house university but we'll still celebrate together so mm -hmm. i will mm -hmm. toss it to ben for any last thank yous and wrap up thanks everybody thank you thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much dr cogsdane thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. And if you guys have questions or if you would like any uh, anything you to follow up with or videos, uh, just just them over the banner and I'll try to get back to you, okay? Uh, sure, sure. Deal, you. Ben. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a great day, guys. Have a great you night. Too. You too. Me too. Uh, <laughs>
That's on Jeffrey. Two, two Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. We gotta close it, Jeff. Good night. Be careful about the rain. Well, thank, thank you for your time. Two weeks about now. So I'm sure. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Hi, Chris. It was great to see you tonight. Chris Dooley, great to have you back, man. Bye, Jeff. Bye. And Thomas, are you ready for, for Thursday? Yes. Yes. Are you going to help me? Thank you, Jeff. Probably be me and Jason, most likely. Oh, Thomas, I hear you've been working at the store a lot. Yes. Yep. Things are Bye. things are still going good for you there? Yes. Yeah, that's really good. Bye. What's up? Days a week. How many days Five a week? Five days a week. Five oh, days man. a week. You're working banker's hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. Me, next. Are you coming tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, you know, I, right. Melissa's son. You know, Melissa Kelly. Yeah. Her oldest son is six already. <laughs> oh my gosh! Really? Six year old. I know. I remember when he was born right before wow. we were leaving for USA games. So his birthday is tomorrow, and oh. we're gonna do. A birthday parade around the neighborhood in our cars where we're going to honk oh, up and Good decorate luck. our cars. Yeah, because he's in kindergarten and that's always a fun time to celebrate your birthday in class. Yeah. And he doesn't get that. So we're going to. I have Stevie Wonder's Happy Birthday to You <laughs> playlist. So I'm going to be playing that the whole time. Well, and... I know one person who is definitely looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, um, I know. Me too. And Jennifer, you can sign up for tomorrow if you visit. You too, Amanda? I am Jennifer. too. Oh, good. I hope there's lots of people. You guys, let them talk one at a time, please. Twenty.com. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to end this meeting. It was great to see everybody. David, I love that tie-dye shirt. That's a really cool one. Thank you. It's for uh, the Green Turtle is a big supporter of Special Olympics. Green they Turtle. are a big supporter. Yeah, yeah the one in the city's closing. And, and Amanda, you have on your Maryland scarf and medals and your Orioles. Man, that was perfect. You wore your Orioles shirt and Dr. Kalkstein's the chiropractor for the Orioles. Oh, you're a Special Olympics. Nice. I don't know if we can see Thomas, you wore your Special Olympics Maryland shirt? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, how are you? Help, Jeff, let me know. Okay. Dan, I like that ESPN banner behind you. That's really I am good. too. Dan, did your mom steal that? Did your mom steal that ESPN banner from somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> He's muted. I'm going to ask her. All right, everybody. Well, have a good night. I'm going to close down the meeting. So we'll One, see two, three, you hang up. Tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.